the 34-yard line, carrying the football this time is Kelvin Hewley, taking it inside the 30-yard line and picking up good yardage all the way down to the 28. Going to be a six-yard gain for Hewley and will set up a second and four for Tyner from the 28-yard line. They have to get just beyond the 24-yard line for a first down. Ten minutes to play in the first half. No score between Chattanooga Tyner and Livingston Academy. Buttram hands to Buchanan, and Buchanan takes it inside the 15-yard line down to the 14. It's going to be a 14-yard gain by Buchanan and will be a first down for Tyner at the 14-yard line where Tyner's going to have it. First and 10 at the Livingston 14. Tyner, as we said, comes in 6-4. and four. Livingston Academy at 8-2 and two in 1995. Pro set behind Buttram. Two wide receivers to the right side. Livingston with the blitz coming, and they tackle Hewley for a loss as Coffey was coming in on the blitz, and he was in on the tackle along with Blake Almond Going to be no gain on the play. Might have even lost a yard, did Hewley? They'll say no gain. So it's going to set up a second and 10 for Tyner from the Livingston 14-yard line. Two wide receivers to the right side this time for Tyner. Buttram comes over and says something to Joe Barker. They bring Barker in motion from right to left. Buttram wants to throw to him. No, they set up the wide receiver screen. It's complete to Ellison. And it's not Ellison. That's number 25. It's going to be a first down for Tyner as pushed out of bounds at the one-yard line is Ronnie Strickland. It's going to be a 13-yard gain for Strickland on his second catch of the night. And it's going to be a first and goal for Tyner from the one-yard line. As they brought Barker in motion, looked like they might be going to throw to him on a little fade pattern. But they threw to the second wide receiver, the wide receiver on that side, and that was Strickland, and they were able to get it out complete to him, and he made 13 yards after the catch, and it's a first and goal from the one-yard line for Tyner. Again, the pro set, the running backs line up almost shoulder to shoulder. Ball's loose, and Buttram able to pick it up for no gain. As Hewley looked like he got a quick start that time, and Buttram wasn't expecting him to be there that quickly, and the ball came free, and Buttram lost about a yard on the play. So it's going to be a second and goal from the two-yard line. So let's see if the Livingston defense can do like they did in the first possession when Tyner had it first and goal. It's second and goal from the two-yard line. They line up a wing back. He's almost lined up in the backfield. They bring him in motion now from left to right. Run that way with Tony. And Tony stopped for no gain. Penalty marker down. Let's check the penalty. Tony's tackled at the line of scrimmage. But we'll check the penalty marker as it's thrown right at the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be a hold against Tyner. So that's the second penalty of the night, or rather the third penalty of the night against Tyner. And this is going to be a 10-yard step off, and we'll move the football all the way back to the 12-yard line where it's going to be second and goal. So Livingston gets the break with the penalty against Tyner as Tyner again hurts their chances on this drive with that holding penalty. And they have it second and goal from the 12. Two wide receivers go to the left side, two to the right for Buttram. Fake the draw play. Buttram still has it. He wants to go to the corner, but the receiver is covered. Now Buttram's in trouble. He's sacked. Joey Reagan in there with the sack for Livingston. Buttram's going to lose a yard on the sack, making a two-yard loss, maybe a three-yard loss for Buttram. And that was a coverage sack by the Livingston defense as the secondary had the receivers covered all over the field, then Reagan got to him, and it sets up a third and goal from back at the 15-yard line. Big play for the Livingston defense here. Four down linemen for the Cats. 
bring the man in motion. Buttram sets up on the little semi-roll. Hit as he throws. Flash broken up. The pressure was by Kevin Bond. It was broken up by Kevin Coffey. It's going to be a fourth and goal for Chattanooga Tyner from the 15-yard line. That may have been Boswell back there. I believe that was Moore back there who broke it up. Matt Moore may have been the player that broke that up. And it's going to be a fourth and goal for Tyner from the 15-yard line. And a timeout taken. This one's called by Livingston with 6.58 to play in the first half. No score in the ball game. Fourth and goal for Tyner from the Livingston 15-yard line. Livingston with a big defensive series as Tyner had it first and goal at the one-yard line. On first down, Livingston stopped them for a loss of one. Then Tyner called for the holding penalty. And then a sack by Joey Reagan. The last play, a pass deflected away by Matt Moore. And it's fourth and goal. Buttram from the shotgun. Delayed blitz coming. Buttram has time. Now the pressure gets to him. It's intercepted. Kevin Coffey with the interception. Coffey to the 30, to the 35. Back to the to the 38-yard line. Livingston has the first big break of the ball game. They have the first turnover. It's an interception thrown by Jackie Buttram. And the Wildcats have it. First and 10 at their 38-yard line after the interception by Kevin Coffey. As Livingston got the pressure on Buttram late, he tried to force it in to the middle of the field, and Coffey was able to pick it off and return it up to the 38-yard line where Livingston's going to have it first and 10. Trips to the right for the Wildcats. One wide receiver to the near side, no tight ends. Tom Wendell, the Livingston quarterback. They bring Smith in motion from right to left. Wendell, short drop, has time, goes over the middle, pass to Ray, is caught. First down, Livingston at the Tyner 36-yard line. 26 yards from Tom Wendell to Chris Ray on the first pass completion of the night for Wendell. That's also the first catch of the night for Chris Ray. And the Wildcats have it first and 10 at the Tyner 36-yard line. Coffee comes wide to the left. Bowers wide to the right. Ray is the tight end to the left side. High formation behind Wendell. Wendell gives to Garrett, who's hit right the line of scrimmage and hit hard. No gain on the play for Matt Garrett. Is in there to make the stop is number 76. That is Corey Harris in there along with Kelvin Hewley to make the tackle on Matt Garrett for no gain. And it's going to set up a second and 10. For Livingston, they give him a yard on the play. So it's a second and nine for the Wildcats. High formation behind Wendell. Tyner shows the blitz. Livingston picks it up. Wendell has time. He's got Ray again. Ray is inside the 25-yard line down to the 21. That's an 11-yard gain from Tom Wendell to Chris Ray. That's a 15-yard gain from Tom Wendell to Chris Ray. And another Livingston first down as Wendell again found Ray. Ray on two catches, 41 yards, and Livingston's offensive line did a good job that time picking up the blitz by Tyner. As again, Tyner rushed six, and they were able to pick them up and give Wendell time to find the open receiver. It's a first and 10 from the Tyner 21-yard line, 450 to play in the first half. Wendell gives on the delayed handoff to Garrett, and he takes it inside the 20 down to the 19-yard line. Going to be a short gain for Matt Garrett, a gain of two for the Livingston sophomore. Garrett leads Livingston in rushing with 600 yards now, over 600 yards on the season. Give him three yards on the carry. So it's going to be a second and seven for Livingston Academy from the Tyner 18-yard line. This is the first time Livingston has been in Tyner territory tonight. Three wide receivers for Livingston. They bring Ogletree in motion. Wendell short drop. Going for coffee. Is it caught? It is. It's first and goal from the four-yard line. 
12-yard pass reception for Kevin Coffey on his first catch of the night. And it's going to be a first and goal for the Wildcats from the four-yard line as Coffey had to make the diving catch. Livingston lines it up in the eye formation. Tyner with seven men at the line of scrimmage. Delayed handoff to Garrett, hit in the backfield and caught for a loss. Back there to make the tackle is Corey Harris, along with Kelvin Hewley. It's going to be a loss of four on the play for Garrett. And it's going to set up a second and goal from the nine-yard line. Coffey goes wide to the right. Bowers wide to the left. The lone running back is Garrett. Wendell to throw. Fade pattern to Coffey. He's open. Touchdown, Livingston. The Cats lead with 3-10 to play in the first half. Kevin Coffey from nine yards out scores the first touchdown of the night for Livingston. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the far side, and Coffey, with the little fade pattern, he baked the post, got the wide, got the defensive back to take a step that way, and Coffey was wide open. Wendell laid it out perfectly, and the Wildcats lead with Jordan Watkins on to attempt the extra point. Place is down, the kick is up, and it is good. With 3-10 to play in the first half, the Livingston Academy Wildcats lead 7-0. Tom Wendell on that drive was four of four for Livingston Academy. Unofficially and through the touchdown, that a nine-yard touchdown pass. Chris Ray had two catches in that drive for 41 yards. Kevin Coffey had two catches for 21 yards, and Livingston leads seven to nothing. Tonight's TWSAA football playoffs being brought to you by the following sponsors. The Union Bank and Trust Company, the Dairy Queens of Livingston and Salina, the Church Street Service Center, Wascon Incorporated, the Livingston Regional Hospital, Lay Simpson Furniture Company of Livingston, the Swallows Insurance Agency of Livingston, Cookville, and Salina, E.B. Gray Jewelry, First National Bank of the Cumberlands, Coleman Oil Company, and Dr. Joe T. Upton, DDS. Watkins to kick off for Livingston. We've just had our first score of the ball game. Watkins sends it down the center of the field. Tyner takes it at the 24-yard line. Returning the football is Rashad Buchanan. Takes it up to the 41-yard line, where it's going to be a first and 10 for Tyner as they trail for the first time tonight. Tyner, until that drive, had dominated in field position and in yardage. But with that drive, Livingston able to take the lead as the Livingston defense has played excellently tonight, especially inside the red zone or inside the 20-yard line as Tyner has had it first and goal on two occasions. Livingston has turned them away on both occasions. There's a new quarterback into the ball game, and he is greeted by Livingston's Tony Coffey, carrying the football as number seven, Rory Hinton, on his first carry of the night, and Coffey hits him hard after a one-yard gain. And it's going to be a second and nine for Tyner from the 42-yard line. We're inside three minutes to play, approaching two minutes to play in this first side. Two wide receivers to the left side, one to the right. And that is that is still Hinton at quarterback. Hinton keeping it on the quarterback roll. Gets a block on the corner, has a first down, stumbles and falls at the 47-yard line. That's going to be an 11-yard gain for Rory Hinton and a first down for Tyner. It's a gain of 11 on the quarterback keeper, and it moves the football to the Livingston 46-yard line. A minute 55 to play in the first half. Livingston leads seven to nothing. Four wide receivers. Hinton on that little semi-roll, throws on the move. That's a wobbly pass. Is it caught? It is not. It one hop in to Reginald Ellison. Again, Livingston had pressure on the quarterback as Hinton cannot find his receiver. I believe that was Reagan and Almond Road in there on the pressure. And it's going to be a second and 10 for Tyner from the Livingston 46-yard line. 
as Tyner has went with their backup quarterback, trailing seven to nothing. Buttram started tonight. He was able to move the Tyner team, but could not get the ball in after they got inside the 10-yard line. Bring Ellison in motion. Hinton throwing down the near sidelines. That pass was nowhere near Anthony Jones as that one just wobbled out of the hands of Rory Hinton. Cool night here in Tyner. Actually, a cold night. It's right around 40 degrees and a strong wind blowing here. And Hinton was throwing right into that wind. And it's going to be a third and 10 for Tyner. Clock stopped with a minute 40 to play in the first time. Livingston can hold here. They still have all of their timeouts remaining to the Wildcats. Hinton throws again, and this one is intercepted. Kevin Vaughn with the interception for Livingston. Second interception of the night for Livingston Academy, and now Livingston has the short field to work with as Vaughn gets this one with a minute 34 to play in the first half. And let's see if the Wildcats can score after another turnover by Tyner. It's a first and 10 Livingston from the 39-yard line. They get out of the huddle quickly as the clock's running with a minute 25. Remember, Jordan Watkins, the Livingston kicker, has been very accurate this season. High formation behind Wendell. Ray is a tight end of the right side. Wendell's going deep down the far sidelines, and it's broken up. Intended for Coffey to pass a little underthrown in there to knock it away was Rashawn Strickland. And it's going to set up a second and 10 for Livingston from the 39-yard line. A minute and 11 seconds to play in the first half. Livingston has the football at their 39. They have all of their timeouts remaining. Excuse me, they do not. They have two timeouts remaining, does Livingston. <laughs> Bowers wide to the left, Coffee wide to the right. Eye formation behind Wendell. Draw play to Garrett. Big hole off the right side, and he takes it up near the 44-yard line. Going to be a five-yard gain for Matt Garrett. And it's going to set up a second and five. Clock running, rather a third and five. Clock running with 40 seconds to play in the first half. Livingston may be content to go into the locker room with this seven to nothing lead. The Cats will get the ball to start the second half. Draw, or rather, hand off to the fullback. That's Ogletree. He's got a first down at the Tyner 45-yard line. It's going to be an 11-yard gain for Mark Ogletree and a Livingston first down. Let's see how Livingston plays it now with the first and 10 from the Tyner 45. They take their second timeout. They call it with 28 seconds to play in the first half. With timeout, your score. Livingston Academy 7, Chattanooga Tyner nothing. 28 seconds to play in the first half. Livingston leading 7 to nothing. back after the timeout. Livingston has the football at their 45-yard line. They need to get it at least to the, to the 25 to give Watkins a good chance. Tom Wendell was kicking some long field goals in warm-ups. He hit some from 45 yards out. So he may be the option with a long field goal attempt. Three wide receivers for Livingston. Play action for Wendell. Going deep down the middle, got Ray again. First and 10 for the Wildcats. It's first and goal from the nine-yard line. 36 yards from Tom Wendell to Chris Ray. Ray on three catches, 77 yards. It's a first down for Livingston at the nine-yard line. First and goal for the Wildcats. Wendell has him up to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. And he'll down it with 16 seconds. They let the seconds tick off. So the clock stopped with 15 seconds. So it's going to be a second and goal from the nine yard line. Livingston with one timeout remaining. They've got time for maybe two plays. Then still have a chance at a field goal attempt. So they got to take a couple of shots at the end zone here. 
Lone running back behind Wendell is Aldridge. That was not Aldridge, that was Ogletree. Wendell's under pressure. Throws it. It is, it is incomplete. The defensive back and receiver both over there. That was Kevin Coffey for Livingston and Rashawn Strickland for Tyner. And a long pause by the official and finally the signal for incomplete pass. And the clock sits at seven seconds. And they're going to call a timeout. That last play took eight seconds. They had 15 seconds left when they called it. It took eight seconds. So the Wildcats are going to have to take a timeout and talk about it with seven seconds to play in the first half. Tonight's Tito West LA football playoffs being brought to you by the following sponsors. The Dairy Queens of Livingston and Salina, the Church Street Service Center, Wascon Incorporated, the Livingston Regional Hospital, Lay Simpson Furniture Company of Livingston, Swallows Insurance Agency of Livingston, Salina, and Cookville, E.B. Gray Jewelry, the First National Bank of the Cumberlands, Coleman Oil Company, Dr. Joe T. Upton, DDS, and the Union Bank and Trust Company. Livingston, it appears, is going to go for the touchdown. If they can get a quick pass pattern here, even an incomplete pass would let them have a chance at a field goal attempt. And again, Livingston will get the football to start the second half. They lead 7 0, does Livingston Academy. It's a third and goal from just inside the 10 yard line. Livingston Academy head coach Danny McCoy leaving the huddle. Four wide receivers for Livingston Ray and Coffee to the right, Bowers and Smith to the left. Lone running back is Ogletree. Blitz coming. Wendell under pressure. Throws it on the crossing pattern. Incomplete. Two seconds to play. One second now. And Livingston's going to get a chance at a field goal. They're going to spot it down at the 10-yard line. This is going to be a 27-yard attempt by Jordan Watkins with one second remaining in the first half. They spot it down at the 17. The hash mark to the left. Place is down, the kick is up, and it is good! At halftime, the Livingston Wildcats lead it 10 to nothing over Chattanooga Tider. start the second half, the Livingston Academy Wildcats leading 10 to nothing over the Rams of Chattanooga Tyner. Livingston comes in with a record of 8 and 2 overall. Tyner comes in with a record of 6 and 4. The winner of this ball game will play the winner of the Knoxville Austin East Volunteer High School game being played tonight. If Volunteer wins, the winner of this game will host next uh, playoff game next week. If Austin East wins, they will host the second round of the playoffs next week. So that's who the winner of this game gets. We've got Livingston officially with 138 yards of total offense. 98 in the air, 40 on the ground. Leading the way, rushing the football is Matt Garrett with 26 yards. Mark Ogletree, we've got him with 24 yards. Tom Wendell a minus nine yards. Brian Aldridge a minus one yard for the Livingston offense to give them a total of 40 yards rushing. Receiving the football, we've got Chris Ray with three catches for 77 yards. Kevin Coffey, two catches for 21 yards. And Livingston's only touchdown of the night. It came with 310 to play in the first half. Livingston also has had a 27-yard field goal by Jordan Watkins. That one with no time left in the first half. Livingston has picked up six first downs. Wildcats have thrown one touchdown, no interceptions for Livingston's Tom Wendell. He is 5 of 11 unofficially on the night. No turnovers in the first half for Livingston. Chattanooga Tyner has committed two turnovers. Those, both of those interceptions. One, an interception by Kevin Coffey with 6.42 to play in the second quarter. The other, an interception by Kevin Vaughn with 1.34 to play in the second quarter. Both of those resulted in points for the Livingston offense. This Livingston defense has played great tonight. They have had their best game of the season, their best half of the season so far. And they have held Tyner on two occasions with a first and goal inside the five. They have turned Tyner away both times. 
Livingston gets the ball to start the second half. This is Moore from the 20-yard line. Moore reverses his field. He's across the 25 to the 30 and hit hard at the 30-yard line, able to lean forward and take it on out to the 31-yard line. That's where the Cats are going to have it, first and 10 to start the second half. Tonight's TWSWA football playoffs first round game being brought to you by the following sponsors. The Church Street Service Center, Wascott Incorporated, the Livingston Regional Hospital, Lay Simpson Furniture Company of Livingston, the Swallows Insurance Agency of Livingston, Salina, and Cookville, E.B. Gray Jewelry, First National Bank of the Cumberlands, Coleman Oil Company, Dr. Joe T. Upton, DDS, Union Bank and Trust Company, and the Dairy Queens of Livingston, Livingston and Salina. The first play of the second half for Livingston is an incomplete pass intended for Kevin Coffey on the far side. Pass thrown by Tom Wendell. Livingston and Tyner were tied at zero at the end of the first quarter. Cats able to score 10 points in that second quarter to take the 10 to nothing lead, which we have now. And it was made possible by the turnovers committed by Tyner, both of those interceptions thrown. And there's the first turnover of the game for Livingston. This one's picked off by Anthony Jones. turnover of the night for the Tyner defense. They've got it first and 10 at the Livingston 39-yard line. So Tyner, let's see if they can capitalize off the first turnover of the game by Livingston. They line up four wide receivers. Buttram back in there at quarterback, almost through another interception. That pass was intended for Anthony Jones. The coverage over here by Andy Stafford for Livingston, and somehow they got... Ronnie Strickland out there, and he was able to get in the way of Stafford and keep him from getting that interception. And Buttram has had to come back out of the lineup. Coming in to replace him is Rory Hinton. Hinton played in the first half. It's a second and 10 for Tyner. Misdirection handoff. Carrying the football is number 32. That is Jason Ball carrying for Tyner. He takes it inside the 35 down to the 32-yard line. Going to be a seven-yard gain for Jason Ball. And will set up a third and three for Tyner from the Livingston 32-yard line. Clock running with ten and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Allison on the end around. He's got a first down. Allison inside the 20. Still on his feet at the 15-yard line. It's going to be a 17-yard gain for Ellison. And Tyner's going to pick up their first first down of the second half. They've got it first and 10 from the Livingston 15-yard line. So Tyner threatening again. Pitch goes back to Ellison. Excuse me, that is Tony. Tony on the end around this time. Livingston strings him out. But he is able to take it forward for a gain of five on the play. Mosley over there to make the tackle for Livingston. It's going to be a second and five for Tyner from the 10-yard line. Clock running with 9.40 to play in the third quarter. Livingston leads 10 to nothing. Tyner threatening again. Livingston's defense has been able to hold on two occasions in this same type of situation. Hinton carries it, and he's got a first and goal, it looks like, inside the five-yard line. That's a six-yard, maybe a seven-yard gain. That's a nine-yard gain as he moves the football all the way down to the one-yard line. So it's going to be a first and goal for Tyner from the one-yard line. Hewley coming back in for Tyner, so they get a little more size in the lineup. Hewley's coming in replacing Nick Tony. So they bring that big fullback back in and bring the wing back out. Tony lines up in the backfield along with Buchanan. Give the football to Buchanan. He's hit for a loss. Tony Coffey back there to tackle Rashad Buchanan for a four-yard loss. 
So it's going to be a second and goal from back at the five-yard line. So again, the Livingston defense able to throw Tyner for a loss on first and goal. And they move the football back to the five-yard line. Two wide receivers to the right side. The ball is in the middle of the field. Hinton's going to throw, crossing pattern, and it's a touchdown for Tyner. It is caught by Ronnie Strickland. Strickland with the touchdown from five yards out. First touchdown of the night for Tyner comes with 8.27 to play in the third quarter. As Hinton throws the touchdown, the first one of the night thrown by Tyner quarterback, and Tyner will attempt the extra point. Snap is high. They're going to have to try to run it in, and the conversion fails. So it's a four-point lead. That keeps it a two-possession game. They cannot tie it with a field goal now, can Tyner? And it's going to be a 10-6 ball game with 8.27 to play in the third quarter. So Tyner able to capitalize after the turnover by Livingston. All the points in this ball game have come after turnovers. Livingston scored after two interceptions, a touchdown to field goal. Now Tyner scores a touchdown after game interception thrown by the Livingston quarterback. Livingston drops. Derek Wilson and Kevin Coffey deep to receive the kick from Tyner. To kick it will be Rashawn Strickland. Strickland's kick. Angley Norris the near sidelines. Coffey catches it at the 16. Coffey's across the 20. Cuts it upfield to the 25 and upended at the 26-yard line. That's where Livingston's going to have it. First and 10 to start their second drive of the second half. Tonight's football playoff game being brought to you by the following sponsors. Wascott Incorporated, Livingston Regional Hospital, Layception Furniture Company of Livingston, the Swallows Insurance Agency of Livingston, Salina, and Cookville, E.B. Gray Jewelry, First National Bank of the Cumberlands, Coleman Oil Company, Dr. Joe T. Upton, DDS, Union Bank and Trust Company, the Dairy Queens of Livingston and Salina, and the Church Street Service Center. Mark Ogletree with a big carry. He takes the football all the way up to the 49-yard line. It's a 24-yard run for Mark Ogletree, and Livingston has a first down. As Ogletree carries on first down, taking it all the way, they give him the 50-yard line. So it's a 25-yard gain for Ogletree, and it's a first and 10 Wildcats from midfield. Wide receivers to each side. The wide receiver to the near side is lined up very close to the offensive tackle. Play action for Wendell. Looking for Ray. He's got him, but Ray is tackled for little or no gain. Is in there quickly to make the tackle is Re Reginald Ellison. It's a one-yard gain for Ray on his fourth catch of the night. And it's going to be a second and nine for Livingston from the Tyner 49-yard line. Ellison had that one sniffed out as he was able to tackle Ray immediately. And Ray did a good job just holding on to that football and getting the one-yard gain. It's a second and nine for Livingston. Wide receiver to the right side is Coffey. Wide receiver to the left side is Bowers. High formation behind Wendell. Blitz coming. Wendell sacked. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. It'll be a six-yard loss for Tom Wendell. And it's going to set Livingston up with a third down and long 15. Closer to 16 yards for the first down for the Wildcat offensive unit. They're back at their 44-yard line. As that's the second time Tyner's been able to get to him with the blitz. And Wendell did a good job that time holding on to the football. Four wide receivers. Nobody in the backfield with Wendell. The tight end is to the right side. Again, the all-out blitz. Sets up the tight end screen. Ray caught it, but only for a yard gain. There's a penalty marker down. Penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Let's check the marker. The Tyner crowd does 
does not sound pleased with the flag. And let's see. It's going to be an eligible receiver downfield against Livingston. So Tyner will probably decline that and set up a fourth and 14. They will decline it. So give Ray the catch, and it was good for a yard. So it's going to set up a third and 15 for Livingston now from the 46-yard line. So the Wildcats going to have to punt the football away with 6.16 to play in the third quarter. So Jordan Watkins comes on to punt the football away for Livingston Academy. Dropping deep to receive for Tanner is Ellison and Strickland. Snap is good. The kick is away. Strickland takes it at the 21. Breaks one tackle. Breaks another. Strickland finally pushed out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Coffee over there to push him out of bounds along with Puckett and Vaughn. They'll give him the 31-yard line, so it's going to be a first and 10 for Tyner from their 31-yard line. And Tyner finally able to get on the scoreboard after their last drive. They were able to cut the lead to four. It's 10 to six. Livingston leading with 5.43 to play in the third quarter. Tyner to the line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers to the left side, one to the right. Give to Ellison on the end of round. Ellison makes a move, gets free from a tackler, and stays on his, on his feet up to the 39-yard line. Going to be an eight-yard gain for Reginald Ellison, and it's going to set Tyner up with a second and short. Ellison now with 40 yards rushing on the night. It's second and two for Tyner from their 39-yard line. Buttram back in. Carrying the football now is number 32. That is Jason Ball again on the carry, and he's got a Tyner first down, taking the football down to the Livingston 46-yard line. That's a 15-yard gain for Ball as he picks up the Tyner first down. It's a first and 10 for Tyner from the Livingston 45-yard line. Ellison in motion again. Fake the pitch to Ellison, run it with the fullback. Carrying the football is Buchanan, and he'll pick up four yards on the carry as Buchanan takes it down to the 42-yard line, where it's going to be second and seven, make it a three-yard gain for Buchanan, second and a long six for Tyner from the 42-yard line of Livingston. Four wide receivers for Buttram, who's back in after having to leave in the opening drive with an injury. Blitz coming. Buttram steps away from it, throws across the middle, and is it caught? It is not. It's incomplete. Intended for Ellison incomplete, and the incomplete pass will bring up a third and seven. Kevin Vaughn had good pressure on Jackie Buttram and hit him hard as he released the football, but the incomplete pass will bring up a third and seven for Tyner with four minutes to play in the third quarter. Livingston leads 10 to six. We were tied at zero at the end of the first quarter. Livingston led 10 to nothing at the half. And Tyner scored here in this third quarter, the shovel pass. It's complete to Ellison up to the 40 yard line. That's gonna be a two yard gain on the shuffle pass. And it's gonna set up a fourth and five and it's at the 40-yard line, and it looks like Tyner's getting the punt team on, but this is a good spot in the field for a fake punt. They bring the punter on. That is Rashawn Strickland, but this is a perfect spot in the field for the fake. On a fourth and five from the Livingston 40-yard line, the punter is not number three. It's number 21. That is Reginald Ellison to punt. Kevin Coffey is deep. Ellison kicks it away. 
And it will take a tighter roll. And did it get into the end zone? It did. Just barely got across the goal line. It's going to be a touchback for Livingston. They'll get it first and 10 at their 20-yard line. Tonight's TWS play first-round playoff game is being brought to you by the Livingston Regional Hospital, Lay Simpson Furniture Company of Livingston, the Swallows Insurance Agency of Livingston, Salina, and Cookville, E.B. Gray Jewelry, the First National Bank of the Cumberlands, Coleman Oil Company, Dr. Joe T. Upton, DDS, Union Bank and Trust Company, the Dairy Queens of Livingston and Salina, the Church Street Service Center, Wascon Incorporated. Two wide receivers the right side for Wendell on first and 10 from the 20 yard line. Wendell gives to the fullback Ogletree, tries to bounce it outside, there's a penalty marker down. Ogletree has seven yards on the carry, but let's check the marker. It's thrown in the area of where a face mask would be called, but we'll check and see. If it is a face mask, it'll be tacked onto the end of the run. But they're going to talk to Tyner, so apparently it's going to be against Livingston. It's going to be holding against Livingston. So they'll step it off from the spot of the foul. So it's going to move the football to right around the 10-yard line. See where they spot it down. They're going to spot it down at the 9. So it's a first and 21 for Livingston from the 9-yard line. Livingston has it first and 21. Four wide receivers for Wendell. Wendell to throw. Pass through the hands of Coffee and incomplete. The defender had fell down. If Coffee had been able to hold on, would have been a big play for Livingston, but Coffee could not. So the incomplete pass is going to set up a second and 21 for Livingston Academy. Second and 21 for Livingston. Again, four wide. Wendell hit as he throws, going for Ray off his fingertips and incomplete. The incomplete pass is going to bring up a third and 10. Ray coming down the center of the field again. This time, Tyner rolled the safety over with him to get double coverage on Ray. Wendell's still almost able to get in there for the completion. The coverage back there was by Joe Barker and Nick Tony. Wendell was hit as he released the football, and it's going to bring up a third and 21 for Livingston Academy. They've got to get to the 30-yard line for the first down. They're at the 9-yard line. Wendell under pressure. Got to get it out of the end zone. Still throwing, and the pass is incomplete. Wendell did a good job buying time. And the pass falls incomplete, so it's going to bring up a fourth and 21 for Livingston. They're going to be forced to punt the football away with 2.32 to play in the third quarter. Reginald Ellison and Ronnie Strickland drop deep to receive the punt from Jordan Watkins. And the fair catch made at the 37-yard line by Reginald Ellison. It's going to be a first and 10 for Tyner from the Livingston 37-yard line. That's where Tyner's going to have it, trailing by four, 10 to six, with 2.20 to play in the third quarter. New wide receiver in the ball game for Tyner. That is D Demicus Rawls going wide to the left for the Rams. Handoff goes to Allison, hitting the backfield, breaks a tackle, and is able to take it forward for a gain of a couple as Allison was hitting the backfield but was able to break two tackles and take it forward to the 36-yard line where it's going to be a two-yard gain for Allison and going to set up a second and eight for Tyner. From the 36-yard line. 
receivers for Tyner this time. Livingston, the 4-4 defensive set. They bring Tony in motion, pitch it to him. Tony coming to the right side is tripped up at the 32-yard line. Blake Almond rode there to make the tackle for Livingston along with Andy Stafford. Tony picks up three on the carry. And it's going to be a third down and four for Tyner from the Livingston 32-yard line. Jones comes wide to the right. Going wide to the left is Strickland. Buttram rolling to the left side. Throws back on the move, and the pass is caught, but he's going to be short of a first down. Got a good spot out of it. Pass was caught by Strickland, but it looks like it's going to be just a little short of the first down. It's going to be close enough for a measurement. They're going to bring the chains in from the far side. And it is just short of the first down. Inches short for Tyner, so it's going to bring up, up a fourth and one for the Rams. Fourth and less than one for Tyner. Big defensive play for the Livingston Wildcats right here. Livingston is coached by Danny McCoy. He's assisted by Steve Robbins, Bruce Lamb, and Mark Hauser. Tyner is coached by Wayne Turner. He's assisted by Robin O'Brien, Jim Parker, and Bill Cruz. It's fourth and inches for Tyner. Buttram is the quarterback. Gives to Hewley, spins away from a tackle, picks up the first down. Takes it down to the 25-yard line, a three-yard gain for Hewley, and a Tyner first down. Tonight's state playoff game being brought to you by the following sponsors. The Lay Simpson Furniture Company of Livingston, the Swallows Insurance Agency of Livingston, Salina, and Cookville, E.B. Gray Jewelry, the First National Bank of the Cumberlands, Coleman Oil Company, Dr. Joe T. Upton, DDS, the Union Bank and Trust Company, Dairy Queens of Livingston and Salina, the Church Street Service Center, Wascon Incorporated, and the Livingston Regional Hospital. Buttram's pass was incomplete, intended for Strickland. The incomplete pass is going to bring up a second and ten with 24 seconds to play in the third quarter. Line of scrimmage is the Livingston 24-yard line. Jason Ball once again, and Ball will pick up two on the carry. With 24 seconds left in the third quarter, and that may be the last play of the third quarter. And Tyner is going to try to run one more play. Clock stops, clock running, with eight seconds to play in the third quarter. It's third down and seven for Chattanooga Tyner. Buttram's going to throw. Has pressure, now rolls. He was across the line of scrimmage. It's a touchdown if it stands. Buttram was across the line of scrimmage. Nick Tony with the catch. That's the end of the third quarter. At the end of three, Livingston leads 10-6. to six. They start the fourth quarter with Livingston leading 10-6. to six. I thought the catch was made by Nick Tony in the end zone, but he had dropped the football. That's why the touchdown did not stand, but it looked like the quarterback, Buttram, had went past the line of scrimmage, but no flag came down, but the player dropped it in the end zone. So that brings up a fourth and a long seven for Tyner from the Livingston 22-yard line. Make it the 21-yard line, yard line, the line of scrimmage as we start the fourth quarter. Ball, the man in motion. 
They roll three wide receivers to that side. Buttram rolls that way. The pass is caught. It's going to be a first down for Tyner. With the catch is Reginald Ellison. Ellison makes the catch and picks up the first down for Tyner. 17-yard catch for Reginald Ellison. As we start the fourth quarter, Tyner's able to convert on the fourth down, and it's a first and goal from the four-yard line for Tyner. As the 17-yard catch on fourth down picks up the first down for Tyner. set behind Buttram. Gives the football to Hewley, and he'll score. That was Buchanan. Excuse me, we said Hewley. It was Rashad Buchanan scoring from four yards out. Rashad Buchanan, four yards. Buchanan scores with 11.26 to play in the fourth quarter. On to attempt the extra point is number three, Rashawn Strickland. This is a big extra point attempt by Strickland. With a miss here, Livingston can still win it with a field goal. Earlier on their extra point attempt, the snap was high and they did not get a chance to kick it. The holder is Jeff Anderson. The place is down, the kick's up, it's no good. Shank that one terribly. And with 11.26 to play in the game, the lead is two. So Livingston can still win it with a field goal. 11.26 to play in the game. Tyner leads 12 to 10. This is the first time they have led tonight. Livingston will get the football back as Strickland comes on to kick for Tyner. Dropping deep to receive for Livingston is Kevin Coffey, along with Derek Wilson back there. on the ground at the line of football. Tyner has it, but still loose. And Livingston recovered it, I believe, at the 36-yard line. Tony Coffey there to recover it for the Wildcats and give it to Livingston. Reginald Ellison had a perfect shot at the football and could not recover it. Looked like he had for a second, but the ball popped out, and Tony Coffey able to fall on it and give Livingston the football at their 36-yard line. So the Wildcats have it with good starting field position. And let's see if they can capitalize on the break after Ellison couldn't recover that easy onside kick chance. Two wide receivers to the left side for Wendell, one to the right. Wendell looking to throw, has pressure. Dumps it off in the flats, complete to Garrett. Garrett, the ball is on the ground, and Garrett recovers it right at the line of scrimmage. As the ball came free, Garrett was able to fall on it for no gain, make it a yard gain as they say he got to the 37-yard line, so it's going to be a second and nine for Livingston, and Livingston was fortunate that time to be able to keep the football as Garrett was able to fall on his own fumble, and the Wildcats have it second and nine from their 37-yard line. They line up in the eye this time. On the road is the center. The guards are... As a penalty marker comes down, the guards are Burns and Klaus. The tackles are Coffey and Masters. Let's check the penalty. It's going to be against Livingston, a legal procedure against the Wildcats, so that's going to move the football back to the 32-yard line, where it will be second down and 14 for Livingston. 10-22 to play in the game. Chattanooga Tyner leads 12-10. Ray come to the right side. That's Brad Mosley in as a wide receiver to the left side for Livingston. Wendell looks to Mosley on the crossing pattern, intercepted. Anthony Jones with the interception. Jones inside the 20 yard line and brought down at the 12. Jones has his second interception of the night. This one with nine. 
the play in the fourth. Second turnover of the night by Livingston. Let's see where they spot him down. There is a penalty marker down at the 26-yard line. Let's check the penalty. another foul on the play as it's an unsportsmanlike conduct against Tyner so that's going to be another 15 yard penalty against Tyner so that's going to move the football back to the 44 yard line and that's going to set up will that be a first and 10 or a first and 25 it will be a first and 25 since it was a dead ball foul they'll move it all the way back to the 44 yard line so Tyner's going to have the football but they're going to have it in a deep hole with a first and 25 from their 44 yard line. Leading 12 to 10. Big defensive series for Livingston. They've got a first and 25 against Tyner. They need to hold and give this offense the football back with a chance to take the lead. Four wide receivers for Buttram. And the football to Buchanan. He's across midfield and down to the Livingston 49 yard line. Aldridge in there on the tackle for Livingston. It's going to be a six-yard gain for Buchanan. And will set up a second and not, excuse me, a second and 19 for Tyner from the Livingston 49-yard line. They have to get to the 30 for the first down. Might be four down territory for Tyner. Blitz coming. They try to set up the wide receiver screen. The pass is caught. He's got blockers, and he's got a first down at the 27-yard line. Ronnie Strickland with the catch. Good for 23 yards. Tyner has the first down at the Livingston 27-yard line. Strickland shaking up on the play. With the injury, we'll take a timeout. Strickland able to leave the field unassisted. It will be a first and 10 for Tyner from the Livingston 27-yard line. Five linemen for Livingston this time. Fake the pitch, run it inside with Buchanan, and he's tackled for no gain. Might have lost a yard on the play. Excuse me, that was Strickland on the carry. That was Buchanan carrying the football. Tackled. They give him a yard gain to the 27-yard line. So it's going to be a second and nine for Tyner. Clock running with 8.15 to play in the game. Buttram. Pass on the flats, complete to Jones. He's got a first down inside the 10-yard line. It's going to be a first and goal from the seven. They get the six yard line. It's a 21 yard catch for Anthony Jones. And it's gonna be first and goal for Tyner. From the six yard line. is ball. Hand the ball coming up the middle and he's across the five and close to the goal line. He'll take it down to the one yard line. That's a five yard gain for ball and will set up a second and goal from the one yard line. It's a two point Tyner lead, 12 to 10. Second and one. They have it second and goal from the Livingston 
one yard line. point for Tyner and for Livingston if they hold if they don't convert on this extra point then it's a one possession game if they do it's a two possession game Tyner's going for two their kicking game has been ineffective they're going for the two point conversion Buttram has time throws over the middle it's broken up knocked down by Coffey so Livingston can tie it with a touchdown and a two point conversion after the one-yard touchdown run by Rashad Buchanan, Tyner has their biggest lead of the night at eight points. It's 18 to 10, Tyner leading. Livingston led 10 to nothing at halftime. Tyner has gotten two interceptions in the second half by Anthony Jones, and they have capitalized on those interceptions and have taken an 18 to 10 lead. But Livingston can still tie it with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. There's still plenty of time remaining in this game. Seven minutes, 20 seconds to play. Strickland to kick off. the delay is. Now we're ready for the kick. Strickland kicks this one away. Wilson takes it at the 20. Across the 25 to the 30. Wilson up across the 35 and wedges the football on out to the 37-yard line. That's where Livingston's going to have it. First down and 10 to start this drive. Tonight's state playoff game being brought to you by the following sponsors. The Swallows Insurance Agency of Livingston, Salina, and Cookville. E.B. Gray Jewelry. First National Bank of the Cumberlands, Coleman Oil Company, Dr. Joe T. Upton, DDS, Union Bank and Trust Company, the Dairy Queens of Livingston and Salina, Church Street Service Center, Wascon Incorporated, Livingston Regional Hospital, and Lay Septon Furniture Company of Livingston. The pass intended for Ray, thrown behind him and incomplete. It's going to bring up a second and ten for Livingston Academy as the Wildcats will have it second and 10 from their 38-yard line as the line of scrimmage. Tyner has scored 18 unanswered points in this second half to take this 18 to 10 lead. Clock stopped with 6.52 to play in the game. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Wendell gets it complete in the flash to Coffee. Coffee's in the open field. Coffee cuts it back at the 40 to the 35. Coffee inside the 30, still on his feet at the 20. Coffee to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Livingston. Kevin Coffee from 62 yards out scores. Coffee's second touchdown of the night. This one comes with 6.35 to play in the game. Livingston will light it up for the two-point conversion as they try to tie the score at 18 apiece. Grant Swallows brings the play in from the far side. Is that Swallows in there? That is Swallows. What are they going to do? Livingston's got two quarterbacks in there. And they call a timeout. With timeouts or score, Chattanooga Tyner 18, Livingston Academy 16. Going for the two-point conversion. They use their first timeout of the second half. Livingston trying to tie the score at 18. H back to the left side is Garrett. Ogletree is the lone running back. Wendell under pressure, throws in the end zone, incomplete. It's a two-point lead for Tyner with 6.35 to play in the game. To kick it off, 
trailing by two. Tonight's state playoff game between the Livingston Academy Wildcats and the Chattanooga Tiner Rams being brought to you by the following sponsors. E.B. Gray Jewelry, the First National Bank of the Cumberlands, Coleman Oil Company, Dr. Joe T. Upton, DDS, Union Bank and Trust Company, the Dairy Queens of Livingston and Salina, the Church Street Service Center, Wascon Incorporated, the Livingston Regional Hospital, Lay Simpson Furniture Company of Livingston, and the Swallows Insurance Agency of Livingston, Salina, and Cookville. Tyner's going to have it with good starting field position at their 39-yard line after the return by Reginald Ellison. They're going to start at their 39. Livingston needs a three-and-out series by this Tyner offense. Clock runs with 6.20 to play in the game. It's a two-point Tyner lead. And an official timeout taken for Ellison. And he's having an equipment problem with his helmet. While they take care of that, we'll take a time. And apparently they've got the snap fastened on the helmet of Reginald Ellison. And we're ready to start on first and ten. Ellison carries it. Coming to the left side, and he's going to lose the yard. Livingston had good defensive pressure that time. Burns and Reagan in there to make the stop. Ellison is going to lose a yard. And it's going to set up a second and 11 for Tyner from their 38-yard line. About a one-yard loss on the play and second and 11. Clock running with 5.40 to play. Shotgun formation for Buttram. Bobbles the snap. Blitz coming. Buttram going deep. Got a man out there. It's broken up. Chris Ray back there. That's not Ray. That's Brad Mosley. Mosley there to knock it away from the receiver, Ellison, and it looked like Ellison might have gotten a step. Mosley able to close it from his safety spot and knock it away. And it's gonna set up a third and 11 for Tyner now from their 38-yard line. Big play for the Livingston defense. They hold here. They'll get the football back with right at five minutes to play. Coming out is Jason Ball, coming in to replace him is Joe Barker. Third and 11. Buttram, fake the handoff. He's going deep down the near side this time. And it is incomplete. Came out at the last second. Ronnie Strickland couldn't hold it. Looks like he had it. But when he bounced, the football came out. And he never had control of it on the way down. Livingston's going to get the football back. 5-12 to play. The clock stopped with the incomplete pass. Line of scrimmage is the 38-yard line. Tyner's going to have to punt the football away. And Livingston got exactly what they wanted, a three-down series by Tyner. They're going to get the football with a chance. It's a fake. Livingston with the short field to work with. Jordan Watkins is one of one in field goal attempts tonight. That one good from 27 yards. Four wide for Livingston. Smith and Bowers to the left side. Ray and Coffee to the right. Lone running back is Matt Garrett. Wendell has time. Complete to Coffee. Same pattern he scored the touchdown on. Coffee breaking tackles again. Coffee to the 25 yard line. It's a first down for the Wildcats. A 16 yard gain for Kevin Coffee. That is his fourth catch of the night. We've got him with 99 yards receiving on the night. It's a first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Wildcats moving with 4.25 to play in the game. 
Coffee's wide to the right this time. Bowers wide to the left. I formation behind Wendell. Livingston has two timeouts remaining. Ray is the tight end of the right side. Handoff goes to Ogletree up the middle, and he'll be tackled after a short game. Going to be a pickup of a couple for Mark Ogletree. And now they say no game on the play for Ogletree. So it's going to be a second and 10 for Livingston from the 25-yard line. Coffee's going wide to the left. Chris Ray also has five catches tonight for 79 yards unofficially. Get deep in the eye for Livingston. Wendell has time. Looking for Coffee in the end zone. And it is incomplete. There's a penalty marker down. Let's check the penalty marker. The pass is ruled incomplete, but we'll check the penalty marker at the goal line. And Livingston signals that's against Tyner. Line it up in 
the big formation for Livingston. The extra offensive lineman. Run it with the fullback, Ogletree. Touchdown, Livingston, two yards out. Mark Ogletree puts the Wildcats on top with a minute and a half to play. It's a four-point Livingston lead, so the Wildcats going to go for the two-point conversion. They lead it 22 to 18. That would make Tyner score a touchdown and a conversion. They have not scored a conversion yet in this game. They're 0 for 1 on 0 for 2 on extra point attempts, 0 for 2 on two-point conversions. Livingston has both their quarterbacks in the lineup. They line Swallows up as the tailback. Pitch it to Swallows. He's going to throw back to Wendell. Oh, and the conversion's good. Swallows throwing back to Wendell on the conversion attempt. And the Wildcats lead it by six, 24 to 18. With a minute and a half to play in the game. We'll kick off leading 24 to 18. Tonight's telecast being brought to you by the following sponsors. The First National Bank of the Cumberlands, Coleman Oil Company, Dr. Joe T. Upton, DDS, Union Bank and Trust Company, the Dairy Queens of Livingston and Salina, the Church Street Service Center, Wascott Incorporated, the Livingston Regional Hospital, Lace Epson Furniture Company of Livingston, the Swallows Insurance Agency of Livingston, Salina, and Cookville, and E.B. Gray Jewelry. And Tyner's going to have the football at their 42-yard line as they fall on it at that point. Clock will start with the spot of the football. Tyner has two timeouts remaining, I believe. It's a six-point lead for Livingston. Clock is running now as we move inside a minute and 20 to play. Three wide receivers to the right side for Buttram. Buttram rolling that way, has pressure. Buttram now will run and is tripped up at the 46-yard line. The ball is loose. Brandon Burns with the recovery. Brandon Burns falls on it right at the 46-yard line. Livingston's going to have it with the six-point lead. And a Tyner player is shaken up. With the injury, we'll take a timeout. Players shaking up. Brandon Burns got the fumble recovery. I believe Tyner has all three timeouts remaining. A minute and six seconds to play in the game. Matt Garrett is the tailback. Mark Ogletree is the fullback. The clock is running. Livingston needs to use this 25 seconds. Wendell's looking to the far sidelines. He can burn this down inside 50 seconds. And that's going to be a big plus for Livingston. It runs inside 50. Livingston might have just take a delay a game right here. They're going to snap it. Now, the handoff goes to Ogletree. Big hole up the go, middle. Go, go. Ogletree running hard. He's got a first down down to the 35-yard line. 11-yard gain for Ogletree. On his biggest, on a big night for Ogletree, he's got 62 yards now. Unofficially for Livingston to lead them in rushing. 37 seconds to play in the game. They'll start the clock. Tyner's not using their timeouts. Livingston should just take a knee here. Now they take a timeout. Tyner calls time with 29 seconds to play in the game. Livingston leads 24 to 18. 29 seconds to play in the game. Livingston has a first and 10 at the Tyner 35-yard line. Livingston's just going to take a knee. Major, major, uh, Wendell. Wendell downs it at the 37-yard line. And the clock is stopped with 21 seconds to play. Tyner calls the timeout. If Livingston holds on and wins this with 21 seconds left, they will play the winner of Volunteer and Knoxville Austin East. If Austin East wins, Livingston will go there next Friday night, the 10th of November. If Volunteer wins, Volunteer will come to Livingston Academy on November 10th. So Livingston could host the second round 
if Volunteer defeats Austin East. I believe Volunteer came in with a better record than Austin East at five and five. Austin East came in at four and five, but East is the higher seated, seated team. Tyner with one timeout remaining. It's a second and 12 for Livingston. 21 seconds to play in the game. And Wendell will down it again. And let's see if Tyner will take their last time out. Tyner's not going to take their last time out. They're going to let the clock run out. Livingston wins it. 24-18 over Chattanooga Tyner. Wildcats are going to the second round of the state playoffs for only the second time in school history. Next week, they'll play the winner of Knoxville Austin East and Volunteer. If Volunteer wins, it will be at Livingston Academy. If Livingston wins, they'll travel to Austin East, that game to be played on Friday, November 10th. And we do not know any, we have not heard any kind of score from Knoxville. That game was being played at Austin East tonight. Again, your final. Livingston Academy wins it 24 to 18. We'd like to thank our sponsors for making tonight's telecast possible. And from Chattanooga Tyner, for Johnny Pig, I'm Craig Cattrall saying good night, everyone.